So I just wanted to go through a couple more examples with you to make you feel more comfortable with these equidistance theorem before you take your quiz tomorrow. So let's take a look. I'm, you know, going to have our theorems out in the corner so that way we can kind of use them as a reference. So let's take a look at what we have. We're given that PA is congruent to PB and that QA is congruent to QB and we're trying to prove that PQ is the perpendicular bisector of AB. So let's set up what we have so far. Alright, well, I'm going to check my two theorems, see if any of them apply, and if anything I can go further. So I have, if two points are each equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then they determine the perpendicular bisector of the segment. And if a point lies in a perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of that segment. Well, here I do have that Q is equidistant to B and A, and I have P is equidistant to A and B as well, so it seems like I've got that first case. So I can go straight into my conclusion statement. In my reason, I have two points that are each equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, in this case segment A, B. So, they determine a perpendicular bisector. And I know it's tempting to, you know, try to say, oh, definition of perpendicular bisector, but it's really not. And it's going to be really important that you know the wording for these, because otherwise, if you just think of, oh, it's the definition of something, or it's this th theorem, or whatever, it's going to be really difficult to use this to your advantage, because you won't know the wording, and then you won't know whether or not you have a perpendicular bisector. So, that proof is done. Let's look at another one. I have angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, and I'm trying to prove AE is the perpendicular bisector to PD. So it doesn't seem like I'm as easy as my other one, but let's see what we've got. So angle 1 congruent to angle 2, angle 3 congruent to angle 4. Let's take a look at what we have. Well. If I look at this top triangle, my triangle BAD, I see, well, I've got base angles congruent. So let's say that AB is congruent to AD. And our reason, if base angles congruent, then legs congruent. Alright, that looks good so far. Well, I can do the same thing for my lower triangle, BCD. So I can say that BC is concurrent to DC by my same reason. And now I do have that you know, I've got C and A are both each equidistant from B, D. So my line AE, which goes through C, has to be a perpendicular bisector, again, by that first reason. So this can make our proofs really nice, really short, 
you just have to make sure that you're using it properly and that you kind of get these into your head. You can put it on your study sheet but when it comes to the test. You're going to want to know these because it will make your life so much easier. Let's just look at one more. Like I, know. I know you guys want to study, so again, just getting a couple more examples under your belt. So let's see. This time we have a perpendicular bisector. We are given that AD is a perpendicular bisector BC. So, well, what's that tell us? Well, if I know AD is perpendicular bisector BC, I know that, well, if a point lies in a perpendicular bisector, then it is the equidistant from the endpoint, so I can use this to prove AB is congruent to AC. So we're still trying to get triangle ABE, triangle ACE. Let's see, what else can we possibly get? Well, I see that I have legs congruent, so I can get my base angles congruent. So I have angle ABD is congruent to angle ACD. If legs congruent, then base angle is congruent. I know that if I'm a perpendicular bisector, well, I'm perpendicular and I'm bisecting. So I can say that BD is congruent to CD. My reason is just definition of perpendicular bisector. So I could have also gotten that I have the right angle and then gone through HL, but you know, we went with the angles. So there are multiple ways that we can use these ideas. So I have my triangles are congruent by side angle side. And notice I am proving my bigger triangle is congruent, so I am getting a detour, but that has to happen sometimes. I'm justifying. Now I've got to look what in this triangle matches this smaller triangle that we can use. And, well, it looks like that those upper angles are going to be useful. So, let's say that angle EAB is congruent to angle EAC by CPCTC. Now I can get AE congruent to AE by reflexive. And I've got the triangles that I wanted congruent because I have side, angle, side. got AB congruent from step two. I got the angles I just talked about in six and the sides by seven. So 
that is all. Good luck studying for your quiz, and I'll see you in class.